Remember I came on here uh, just a couple weeks ago and talked about Arsene Wenger and a biennial World Cup and how possibly uh, that could be happening sooner than later. It really feels like it could, could be on our doorstep and Arsene Wenger saying things like you can't stop progress. The, the game is evolving and you can't wait for it to do that. So with that in mind, on our side of the pond here in North America, news of the League's Cup expanding starting in 2023. The League's Cup as it stands, and they just had a final in Las Vegas with uh, Leon beating Seattle Sounders 3-2. Entertaining game. Um, by the way, they're talking now that it'll probably be an MLS team in Las Vegas. Fantastic. Another reason to get out there. So it's been a tournament, eight teams, randomly selected, never really felt real. But now with this expanded Leagues Cup, you're going to get that. And there's a lot here, and you can see in this development, which I like very much, the changing landscape of the sport. And you've got to be first, or you're going to be left out. And Mikel Ariola representing League MX, Don Garber of Major League Soccer knew they couldn't sit around and wait, couldn't wait for CONCACAF, so to speak, and they went and grabbed the ring. And I highly recommend others to do it when you talk about the Biennial World Cup, whether you talk about something like the Super League. This is the Soccer OG. We have a lot cooking here. We'll have another video coming out this weekend. I'm going to rate my top five strikers in the U.S. men's national team as it stands. A lot of developments on that front. Check out the Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. I'm going to have my old running mate from ESPN, Adnan Verk, this Sunday night. Look out for that. We're going to have a ball. We're going to talk about the industry because it's very interesting. So just hit the subscribe button. Go ahead. Sorry about that noise, but I really like it. Hit the subscribe. All right, Nations League. Three nations, two leagues, one trophy, World Cup style. They are going to pause the regular season. It's a month-long event, sanctioned by CONCACAF, again in 2023. The winner goes directly into the CONCACAF Champions League round of 16, so it does feed that tournament. Second and third earn a spot. By the way, beautiful trophy. Did you see Leon lift that? That beautiful trophy that, that you, you get for winning this. 47-team tournament. So you have 29 from MLS. You will have 17, oh, pardon me, 18 from Liga MX. And it's going to be that World Cup style like we're going to see in 2026 moving on, where they have 48 teams. We don't have one, but MLS will get a 30th team. So it is skewered towards the MLS clubs. They have a lot more teams in it. Uh, it is... It really is a situation when you look at what Garber and Adiola said. And some of the quotes for Garber, not mincing words. And I've interviewed Don many, many times. And I know he's very careful with what he says, but he just, he laid it out there for you. He said, uh, we need more global interests. This adds rocket fuel to our, our competitions, to our leagues. We need programming. We need part partnerships and activity. He was asked, does this mean it's going to be a merger between the two leagues? He kind of said, well, he didn't say yay or nay, but he said that's going to be impossible, which it really is going to be impossible. And this is the next best thing because you have this tournament, which is going to develop interest. Uh, so no merger because, you know, you're going to have to incorporate promotion relegation and MLS and their owners, I don't think, are ready for that. So this is the next best thing. There was a space. They went on and took it. And... I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm really eager to see it. There's a lot at play here. We'll look at it through MLS's perspective. And I am an employee of the league, so this is great on many fronts because 2023, well, after the 2022 season, there's going to be a new media rights deal for Major League Soccer. Right now, it's at $90 million, which is uh, nothing compared to what just happened with La Liga at ESPN. That was a billion-dollar deal. Uh, same thing with uh, NBC and the Premier League. Paramount CBS spent a ton on the city on uh, Champions League. MLS is our league. We get to control it. We get to, they get to control everything. It should be on par with those. The numbers are getting better. The games, everything's getting better. So all indicators suggest that the rights deal is going to shadow previous rights deals. And MLS takes a big step because this tournament's going to be, you know, part of the appeal. Because if you sign up to add MLS, you'll get a shot at this tournament. So I think there's going to be multiple offers. And that's great news. 
Uh, we're developing our sport here, and the thought that MLS can be a top 10 league doesn't seem so far-fetched. Five years, 10 years. Obviously, the salary cap has to be adjusted or even eliminated. I think this competition speeds that up because it's going to put pressure from Mexico because MLS cannot afford a 48-team tournament, a 47-team tournament, and having four Mexican teams there at the end. They've got to compete. They've got to make finals. They've got to win this or else it doesn't work. So that is gonna speed that process up. We already have a CBA in place, maybe the next one, that'll be loosened up further in some way. Uh, it's gonna increase, but you're gonna to have to really uh, change it considerably because Mexico has such an edge and we've seen it. They have won, uh, we, MLS has never won the CONCACAF Champions League as it in its current uh, uh, situation or its current vision. Uh, we have an all CONCACAF Champions League Mexico final coming up this year. That happens a lot. It's not good enough. Uh, home and home series MLS doesn't win enough against Liga MX teams. So that is a big part of this being successful. MLS knows that and they're going to have to approach it in such. But it is, I'm excited about it for a variety of reasons. It's going to be quick. It's going to be a lot of games all these Liga MX teams have so much clout. Chivas, America, Cruz Azul, Monterrey, Tigres, Santos. Almost all of them you'd like to see because they spend money and they have good teams. But the top six or seven are huge draws, certainly in the United States. It's a good deal for Liga MX because they get to really immerse into the American market. And in turn, MLS getting into the Mexican market is pretty big too, right? The biggest stars of Mexican football play in MLS. Chicharito at the Galaxy. Carlos Vela at LAFC. Alan Polito at uh, Sporting Kansas City. Rodolfo Pizarro at Inter Miami. The Mexican audience wants to see these guys. Because they play on the Mexican national team, or they did. And I think that is uh, maybe a little uh, underreported in all of this. But obviously, it's going to be very profitable for both. And the fact that both benefit from it made it an easy decision and you have all this energy going into it. Uh, one part I don't like is there's not going to be games in Mexico, giving the MLS teams even more advantage, as we've seen that with the national team level. USA-Mexico is just a big draw. Uh, we've seen it. And we're going to see it again in November when they meet in World Cup qualifiers. But... I think MLS fans would love to go to Mexico to see their team play at Estadio Acron in Guadalajara or Estadio Azteca in Mexico City or in the incredible park that Rayados play in Monterrey. Or T I had the chance to go see LAFC play at León. I will never forget it. It was a wonderful experience. So I hope they can move towards that because I think that's good. Plus, it doesn't compromise the tournament with so many games here. But there'll be a lot of Mexican fans coming to games here, you can bet. So tourism, blah, 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 it all is going to be big. And uh, as you take a closer look at this, you can see why they both did it. I, I know there's going to be a lot of pushback and the, the schedule is already just packed. And that brings me to my next point because there's going to be collateral damage here. And it gets to the point I talked about with the Biennial World Cup. You can't stop and worry about that because someone else will jump in there and take your spot. Things are evolving. Things are happening quick. If you don't see it, you're not paying attention. But we've seen it with the Biennial World Cup. We've seen it with the Super League and this expansion, which happens. It's not like if it's going to happen, it's when. So I'm telling you again, get ready for a Biennial World Cup. Get ready for a Super League. They are both going to happen. They're going to look at what's happened here with MLS and Liga MX, and they will use that as an example. As for the collateral damage, U.S. Open Cup, I can't see that really being how it was. Not good for that competition. The CONCACAF Champions League, it's, it's, this is being sanctioned by CONCACAF, but what happens there? Because the only thing different, really, in a League's Cup is the CONCACAF Champions League has the Central American and the Caribbean teams. Those are really nice stories, but do we want to see them all the time? You like to hear about them, but are you going to sit there and watch Herediano take on a team from Suriname? You're not. You go to watch the big clubs from Mexico and the U.S. That's what people want to see. The Champions League, same situation. You want to see young boys get a win or Shakhtar Donetsk, but guess what's going to happen at the end? 
it's going to be Manchester City and Chelsea and Juventus and Real Madrid, maybe not Barcelona this year, but they'll be back there. It's going to be the heavy hitters because that's where the money's at and the money is driving all of this. So while I hate the collateral damage and tournaments that are an antiquated and held such a rich part of the history, you're going to have to shed some games. For lack of a better expression, you're going to have to trim the fat. Stick with the meat and potatoes, which what gets you to your next step. That is the way our game is going. There's too much money in it now. We've never had a situation like this. So things are going to change and they're going to change fast. We might get news on the Biennial World Cup by my next video. It won't happen that soon, but it's happening very quickly. And I think we'll look at this and we can push back and be angry. But once that tournament starts and it gets some rocket fuel into it, you're going to be into it. This was the logical next step. Major League Soccer had to lock in for Liga MX. The good news was Liga MX had as much to gain because as great as that league seems, it is teetering a bit. It has to develop a younger audience. There's a lot when you, do, you read about the data that it needs to reinvent itself. Enter the League's Cup. USA Mexico, the rivalry is now as big as any in the world because it's happening in so many tiers. Players are gonna wanna come here to play in that competition. I guarantee it, and before too long, these are gonna be the two biggest leagues in the Americas, Mexico might already be, and you'll be able to start competing. You see how it's happening? Next step, Gold Cup and uh, Copa America. Let's lock it in. Everything's mutually beneficial, but there's gonna be some things that are gonna fall off the wayside, and it's not gonna be pretty, but you can't stop progress. The soccer OG, the League's Cup is a reality. I give it my stamp of approval. Subscribe while you're here. Subscribe because you get the good stuff. And I tell you things that are going to happen before they happen all the time. Check out the videos. It is all there in living color. Time and time again, I've told you what's going to happen. And check out the Soccer OG podcast.